Good evening. I'll try in this one to actually show you uh, how to use OBS per se. Uh, this is kind of a funny thing because I need to record with another piece of software while uh, I'm using OBS and showing you how to use it. Uh, so if there are artifacts in the video, that's because there are these two pieces of software working at the same time and sometimes fighting a little bit for the resources. So uh, first, a walkthrough of OBS. So what you see here is that I have uh, a preview window that's currently showing uh, my own video. Uh, I have a scene window where I place all the scene that you see. Uh, last time, if you remember, I did a scene uh, that was completely empty, then one with a star feed, then one where I was in the corner, one where I had um, my slides, if I remember, a terminal as well. So, so I had this information uh, displayed all the time, uh, as well as one where I would show the NDI capture from my iPhone. Uh, so let me first show you how to create uh, a brand new screen. So for that, I will create a scene and we'll call it demo in this case. And once I have the demo scene created at the beginning, it's completely black. So the first thing I'm going to show you is how to add a, a video source. And here we're going uh, to add uh, what you expect, of course, is a video capture device. And I will do it from scratch. So I'll create a brand new device. And I'm going to go pick, and you have the choice between your various um, video acquisition device. I'll pick my Logitech. Now you notice that when this comes up, uh, the view of the Logitech, as I pointed out, is widescreen and it manages to cover uh, more than my green screen. So this is not quite good. And anyway, uh, as a good practice, we're going to put in the video material uh, where my video is shrunk in the corner. So it doesn't need, especially if I broadcast in uh, 720p, I certainly don't need to have a, a sampling of the video of 720p. So what I recommend is you drop the resolution to maybe a quarter of that. And at the same time, it makes the window a little uh, narrower in my case. It varies from camera to camera, but that is good enough for actually um, making sure that I only have my green screen and nothing else. So once I've done that, that's good. I have my video, I can place it wherever I want. For example, I can do that. I can resize myself by picking the corner. One of the things that I can do by uh, hitting the option key and dragging is that I can crop those pictures too, right? So I can do that. Notice that if I try to, to point outside the frame, right? The, the video gets clipped. So that's why sometimes if I move a little bit and it can cut my head, that's because the video stops over there. If you want to adapt that, you can always, of course, move your camera and give it an angle, right? So that it points higher up. It's completely up to you on, on how you frame your shot. So now that this is being done, the first thing I'd like to show you is that you have the option by right clicking on the video camera to go pick a uh, filter. And in the filter, there is an effect filter. You come here and that one is called a chroma key. Now the chroma key is gonna pick up my background and by default it's configured for a green screen. So the moment I'm gonna create a chroma key, he's gonna pick the default parameter for a chroma key that basically kills all the green. There is a, as you can see, there is a little bit of an outline on my red uh, t-shirt. Uh, you can play with the similarity parameter to try and maybe kill more of that. Uh, it's up to you how you define that. Uh, if you, of course, exaggerate, you're gonna kill everything, right? So, so you gotta be reasonable as to what you do here, as well as playing with smoothness to uh, not, uh, I mean, preserve the features uh, that you have in the picture. Uh, you can even play with opacity and contrast if you want, but I think that for, for the sake of the, our example, this is good enough. I close and now you get the result that I'm on a black background because the whole thing is transparent. Now, if I want to put an image, it's not very difficult. I can grab any kind of image I have. Here, I'm gonna pick an image from Star Wars, drop it on the screen, and there you go. It gets resized, it's here, and you have exactly what you want. Now, if I place it something like this, you notice that it hides me. That's because it's on top. So this is con for controlling the layering. So I can drop it behind in terms of layer. And there you go. You have, uh, you have this nicely placed over there. I can even lock it in position uh, so that I don't accidentally edit that. Same thing for my video. That's a first setup um, that allows to have my video and an image on it. 
note that you have tons of other sources so please go check you can put audio sources if you want to play an mp3 you can put an mp4 if you want to play a, a movie uh, or a video of any kind inside of this um, there are lots and lots and lots of options you can put some text as well right so if you want to put oh this is a, a piece of text or for example um, something for my stream I would re reuse that so saying a starting soon I put that and there you go you have a text that appears and again you can move it you can do what you want with it great now another thing I can do that's kind of handy uh, you notice here that I have a terminal right and I'd like to actually bring the terminal into the window so the way I do that is by adding a window capture I'm gonna create a brand new one and I'm going to go pick the window. So now I'm going to look for iTerm, uh, which should be one of the window here, OBS White. He recognized the window directly. I say OK. Again, same game. I got to resize this to place it exactly where I want, how I want, make it look the way I want. Um, so here, maybe that would be unfortunate to have it hiding the text. So maybe I would do that in this case and be happy with this. Um, yeah, it's your placement. You, you do what makes sense. Notice that if I make the window wider, indeed it takes more space. So I can always do that and recenter. Now I have a very big, a fairly wide terminal and I can work with that. Notice that this is all life. If I type a less, if I do anything, um, it actually behaves the way you would expect. And I can, I can remax, I can, I can do anything I want in this setup and uh, this is going to actually work right the program starts you do well, you do what you want um, you have all the flexibility in the world uh, to do anything meaningful you can suspend emacs you can come back you can compile you can do any demo actually you can capture any uh, window now sometimes a window is not quite what you want you'd like to actually capture an area of the screen and the reason for this are slides so I'll show you that next by simply saying now let's take the demo scene and duplicate it and I'm going to get demo 2 and what I do in demo 2 is not use the terminal so I'm going to grab uh, this terminal again right and this is this guy and I'm going to remove him right in demo 2 I don't need the terminal but I'd like to actually capture this window which is my um, keynote slide deck now, why do I want to do it different and capture a display? That's because I want to actually show the mouse. Remember that if I hit double alt key, I get a laser pointer. You see it right now, right? Uh, but this is not part of Keynote. This is an overlay of another application. So to capture that, I have to really capture the pixels exactly as they go to my screen. So to do that, it's quite straightforward. You can actually simply add here you pick um, display display capture here we go uh, i'm going to create a brand new display capture um, right now it's my other display so i'll switch to display one i get this window here and i'm going to say let's crop to a window and of course i will pick a window in this case it's going to be keynote uh, it ought to be somewhere here that one there you go boom boom now resize that once again so that it looks just right and here we are now i could even um in this case right it's still a little bigger so let's try maybe to resize a little further and one more notch yay it fits entirely in my frame awesome so now i have this and because it's a it's a capture of the display if i turn on here my laser, the laser is captured alongside everything else and I get that effect. Note that if you go down, of course, you should change the option to not have the toolbar show up on demand. So that's kind of neat, you can do that. Last thing I want to show you, um, before we run out of time, I'll do one more uh, duplication of my demo. So let's do that, let's duplicate, we'll call it, somebody's making ice in the kitchen. Uh, let's uh, create demo three. Um, in demo 3 I'm going to remove the display capture it's gone and now I'm going to run uh, I have my iPad right in front of me you don't see it but it's right there uh, so what I'm going to do is run QuickTime and of course that's on the Mac you have to adapt that on Windows I'm not going to pick any file here I'm going to say let's create a new movie recording it gives me a window like that which is kind of neat 
And what's nice is that here you see there is a disclosure triangle. You can pick your source. You could pick a camera if you want to, but I picked the iPad. And therefore it shows me in the window my iPad in its native resolution. Now I can resize that window, get it ready, and do the same trick. Let's do a window capture in this case, because that's good enough for our purpose. Window capture 4, let go. Uh, we're going to pick a window, and it's going to be QuickTime movie recording we're ready to go here it is you see it's still a little bigger than my screen so i'm going to shrink a little more maybe even a little further than that should even crop the angle over here until it fits right in there you go looks beautiful of course i should make sure that this um, is hidden or disappear we don't even need it in this view so i could remove it and, and be done with it so that's my ipad and that's all i gotta do because once my ipad is here i pick my pen and i go into the ipad and i could use any application i want i explain everything and here i can start using this as a whiteboard typing the right thing for that right and i can start writing math you know hey this is an integer representation and this is the same for i equals 0 to n of b i times t to the i and this is the interpretation of the number b right and i can play this and i can do my illustration i can draw processes i can do you know pretty much anything i want i can draw a link list i can you know sky's the limit because you're doing it live and they actually see you doing everything in person and once you're done with your explanation and you want to go back to the slides no problem you come in the review here and you ask okay let me switch and i'm going to move that window so that it doesn't sit on top i'm going to say let's move back to my slide which was uh, demo 2 right and if i want to go back to the terminal i can do that all the views are there and they're being changed smoothly from one to the next all of this is possible it's very smooth very straightforward and i would encourage you to play with obs there are tons of settings i only touched scratch the, the the surface to actually illustrate what this looks like um, maybe i'll do another one to show how i actually use obs to conduct my zoom webex slack uh, teleconferences because you can actually make sure that obs sends exactly what it composes as a virtual camera that you make Skype or whatever you want point to. And at that point, everybody else sees live your OBS composition rather than a vanilla camera, which is pretty neat as well. So maybe another video for that. But for now, I think that this should give you a good idea of what's possible. And with that, I'll stop the other recording <laughs> program. I was about to stop in OBS. See you guys.